In this video, I'm going to review the Embodimis Array Touch, an expressive controller that on the outside looks like this giant mouse pad, but when you turn it on, it becomes into this super flexible, expressive and beautiful controller. Embodimis sent me this unit for me to review, but they're not paying me anything, so I'm going to give you my completely honest review. So let's see what this beast is capable of. Okay, so the first thing I would like to point out is this beautiful bag that they send you the controller with. So you can take this to whatever place you want. Only this bag is probably worth more than some of your controllers. So this controller feels really good. It feels it's built like a tank. It has this silicone rubbery pad that you can slide your fingers in the X, Y and Z position. So you have pressure too. It comes with USB-C MIDI connector, which can be MIDI 2.0 or regular MIDI, and a connector for power supply. So let's connect this out. You already get that beautiful animation. And bam, you can get your 1000 LEDs, 1000 sensors for you to play with your Array Touch. So how does this work? It has a matrix of a thousand sensors and also a thousand LEDs that can track the position of your finger up and down and also its pressure. And because you have those LEDs, you can put different elements in this grid and have different designs or different layouts. So let's open Ableton Live here and see how we can make it work. So I have Ableton opened here. So if we play, we get the note and see that we are getting two different notes at the same time with different pitch bands. This is because of MIDI polyphonic expression or MPE. Let's choose a different sound here. Okay, so have a profit plugin loaded here. So So you can see that we have this pitch band thing going on. And we also have vibrato. And here we also have notes. But laid out more like a grid. And there are different ways for you to configure your controller. For example, if you press this button, which is a bass clef, you can change the e scale of the keyboard of the or the grid. So if we played this before, this is the configuration for that grid. So this means that we are in C major, but we can be in C melodic minor, for example. <laughs> And if we don't want the chromatic steps here, if we only want the notes of the scales, we can turn this off. So now... And also we can change the octave using those buttons here. Let's see harmonic minor. And we have this button here so we can choose from different layouts. We have 16 presets or 16 banks, but each bank has two different layouts, which we can choose from pressing this Alt button. So we have 
two layouts for each bank. So we have actually 32 layouts. See that this one is not working with the, the slide. We need some extra configuration, but let's take a look in other examples. Another keyboard. This is more like a drum pad, so let's open a drum pad. But in the editor, I'm going to show you how we can take this to the next step so we can take advantage of all the expressiveness of the controller. So let's take a look how we can actually use this editor. So first we need to download the Array Lab. So come to embodymecom slash downloads and here you can download the Array Lab. I advise you to download the firmware and install it through the lab. You also have an Ableton script. You can control Ableton natively with this controller. We have other factory layouts. It's nice to download this. And some packs layouts for some plugins like Serum and pigments. Okay, so I have the Array Lab here. Uh, first thing, we have the same configuration of layouts that we have in the controller. We have 16 layouts and each layout can be switched here to its out version, okay? Just some quick configurations, you can come here. Here you can drop the latest firmware, reset to factory layouts, etc. But it's here where the magic happens. Here you can drag and drop elements to your grid. And one thing you can do is pressing this preview. So you can preview in real time the components here in your array lab. And here, for example, we have a key. Uh, we could also have a keyboard, a key grid, which is uh, a series of keys. You can increase the size by dragging. And if you press shift, you can actually change the size of the keys inside the grid. You have a drum pad, you have faders, you have fader 2Ds, you have even a live pad, which is uh, for you to, to use with Ableton Live. You have a sequencer, which you're not going to dive in this video, but hopefully in the next one. And also buttons and an API zone. An API is where you can program your own stuff. Hopefully I can get to that in the next video too. So let's say you put here a key. Here you, is where you configure the element. So you can set the MIDI channel, the root note, uh, octave and other things. So let's open the piano. So we have the piano. So if I change the notes to a G, so let's add a key grid here. Let's open a synth instead of a piano. Something that I want to do, which is really nice about these controllers, is being able to slide the notes so I can change its pitch. Here we have the option of glissando. It's, it is activated. However, it's not working. I don't know if it's a bug or something that I don't know how to use. But if we change the channel to one. You see that now we can use this glissando, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more about it later. Another thing is that we can change the layout of this grid. You see that the same notes repeat its color, so... So you know that... This is the root, that's the third, and that's the fifth. And the octave repeats here, and you can change where those notes repeat, changing here in semitones. I 
Also, something you can do is instead of showing uh, all the chromatic notes, you can not show. Pressing here, show off scale. So everything now is in tune. And if we change to four degrees, so every after four, the next one will repeat. So you can do things like, oh, sorry. So for this glissando to work, your plugging has to have the same amount of pitch bend range as the lab. So put in the as much as you can, so you can have a, a bigger range here of pitch bend. So 12 and here pitch bend 12. So this way, you're gonna have the right amount of steps when you do the glissando. So the vibrato works a little bit differently. So when you do the vibrato, you realize that I always come back to the root note even if I don't put my finger in the original position. That's because you have this return speed. So if I put this to a small number or none, you can keep the pitch where your finger is. So it depends on what you want. If you want more microtonal stuff, I recommend leaving to none or close to none. Also, you can change the vibrato strength. So, or if you want more, you get more vibrato just moving your finger in the same place. Something really nice about this controller is that it has MPE or MIDI polyphonic expression, which means that you can have different expressions for different notes at the same time. For example, you can have one note pitching that way and the other note this way. But you see that that's not working. We have, even because we have a monophonic synth, but if I set this to poly, You see that's not quite working. The pitch is the same for all the notes. Here we should be able to make this work turning MP settings to enabled. So 48 semitones here and here in the array lab we should set here to MPE. Then you choose the master channel, you can choose one and then the number of channels. This means how many notes you're gonna play at the same time. So basically how many fingers you have. I have 10, let's put 10 here. But it doesn't work. And it doesn't work with this plugin. It should work, I don't know why it doesn't, but we can choose a different one. So pigments from Arturia does work with MPE. So let's see. Let's try another sound. And something that I didn't show you here is that you can change the scale on the fly. So if you press here in the bass clef, you have the list of scales you have. Uh, so you can have, for example, in D major. So what it changed is that now it's highlighted the notes of the C major scale. But you see that we still have chromatic notes. If you don't want chromatic notes, if you just want the notes in the scale, so you never miss a note, you can just press here and turn off the chromatic notes. So now...
And something that we could do here is now mapping also the the pressure. So here we have we can see that we have this aftertouch. So we can map this to something. Let's see this. Okay. So now we have this. And once you are happy with your layout, you can push to the controller. And this way it will be saved in this slot in your controller. And also if you have a layout that you want to see in the editor, you can pull that layout from the controller. And here we have it. But let's take a deeper look on the possibilities of this controller. One thing that I got really interested with this instrument is how can I make digital sounds sound more organic? How can we use the expressiveness of this controller to make digital sounds more expressive? So let's take this drum for example. <laughs> You see, always the same sound, but here in the kick, we have different things we can change, for example. The pitch, we can change the drive. Here in the clap, we can change the tune and then decay. So what I want to do is map that x, y values to those parameters in the synth and see how they sound. Let's start with the kick. And for that, I'm going to show you how you can MIDI map the rate touch in the DAW. So let's say I want to map the pitch. So let's press MIDI, click on the pitch. So click on the thing you want to map. Okay, here, that's the kick, but you don't want to map the kick. You want to map the x and y. And to access that, you hold the bass clef, and now you have access to the parameters that you're sending with that pad. You're sending channel 10, and then you're sending X absolute and Y absolute. Control change 60 and control change 61. You can actually change the number of the control change here. Also, you, want, you can change the channel. And for you to map, let's say I want to map the pitch in the Y axis, up and down. So you press this, and then I want to map the distortion here, I click in the distortion and I press the X. So now, see where we're going. So let's do the same thing with the clap. Also, I don't want my kick to go that up in the pitch. So here I'm going to decrease this. No, less. And something really cool now is that... Since you are changing the pitch in real time, you can kind of tune your drum with your finger. Sounds like a tabla. and even do vibratos. And let's do the same with the other pieces of drum.
So see how amazing it can get if you start mapping things to X, Y, Z. I could play this for hours and hours, and I actually, I think I did, uh, because it gets so much more fun to make electronic music. It really feels like an acoustic instrument. So this type of controller is what might be missing in your setup that can make you feel that you're actually playing your music and not just telling the computer what to do. So the more I play this controller, more things I find I can do it and the more I like it. And if you want to have one too, please use my coupon here in the description so you can have 10% off. So tell me in the comments below, what do you think you could use this for? Give me some ideas. Maybe I can use your idea to make some other videos. And although this controller is great and super flexible, maybe you don't have the money to spend on something like that right now. For that, I really advise you to take my Nerd Musician Pro course, which I teach you how to build your own MIDI controllers. There I teach you how to build your dream MIDI controllers, even if you have zero experience in electronics or programming. And that is spending very little money on each project. So if you want to buy something out of the box or build yourself, it's up to you. But what I do ask you to do is to press that subscribe and like button. That's for free. Okay, so see you in the next video.